Southern Miss will be a great challenge. It's going to be a great atmosphere uh, going on the road and playing. Uh, Southern Miss is an excellent football team. They've got nine starters back on defense that held that Louisiana Tech team to 47 yards total rushing a week ago, and last year held Marshall 26 total yards rushing. So uh, defensively, all four of the front are, all four uh, of the front guys are back. All three linebackers, two guys in the secondary. So they're very athletic. Uh, they base out of a four down look. They play man free and get after you. So it'll be a great challenge for our offense. Uh, defensively or, or offensively, everything starts with Austin Davis. He didn't play a year ago, but he's been their starter. Uh, he got he played up, I think, five games in the last season prior to getting hurt, but he manages the game very well. Uh, he's also a quarterback that can beat you with his feet, and uh, he'll present some problems for us. He makes very little, uh, very few mistakes, and he can throw it and he can run it. Uh, you guys have seen DeAndre Brown. He's a he's an unbelievable athlete. Uh, he didn't play a week ago. I'm not sure what his status is this week. Maybe you guys can find out for us. But uh, if he's on the field, he can make a play from anywhere on the field. And he's a, probably a first round draft pick at some point. Uh, and then Tracy Lampley's a guy, number one for him, who's not in there too deep, but he probably makes more plays than anybody. Uh, he's he play him at tailback. They play him at wide out. Uh, they try to get him the ball in screens and in space. And he's an excellent player. So. Uh, it'll be a great challenge for us. Uh, you know, it'll be again. It's a great atmosphere. It's a conference game, so it's important we go in there and play play very well. It's important we have a great week of preparation, which started on Sunday. We'll continue today, and we got to have a great practice uh, today, tomorrow, and Thursday, and then three days of great mental preparation and get prepared to go play this game. Question: Health wise, offensive line still getting there? Or? Ours. Yeah. Ours is uh, dated. I mean, it just changes every day, unfortunately. You know, Provence, we're not sure yet. Uh, he's got a chance, I think. But, uh, you know, we're just, we got about four or five guys in there that poor Billy just keeps rotating them around. And at some point, probably all of them will be in there at some point. But, uh, you know, it looks like CJ Woods got a chance, which is good. And uh, hopefully Provence does too. But, uh, ankle. Sorry? Ankle, ankle, I'm sorry. Just lower leg, ankle, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I hope not. I hope not. <laughs> I don't think so. No. no, those are hard. If it was that, he wouldn't be. He wouldn't have a chance. And I'm not sure he's. You know, we won't know for sure if he's back about, or not. What about Kelly Jones? Uh, he's probably another week away. What did he do? Uh, same. He's got a little bit of a knee type deal that uh, should be back in a week or so. Won't, be, won't, won't play this week, Chuck. He won't play this week. That being said, Aiken's probably back. We'll practice today, so that gives us a little boost in there to have him back. How do you like Schooler in there? Uh, right yeah, Schooler's done a nice job. You know, it's. Uh, I just wish we could keep all five of them in there and try to get some continuity going. You know, it seems like every time we get five guys in there playing pretty well, you know, we get a, we get somebody gets bumped up and we got to bounce somebody around. But. Uh, you know, Schooler is going to be fine. He's going to be okay. He's a young guy. He's a fresh, you know, red shirt guy that uh, is going to have a great career here. He did. He did some nice things. Woods okay? Would you move Schooler to left guard or just see how that works out? I just see how see how it works out. Yeah, if if Woods okay, they'll both absolutely. Yeah, those those will be two guys. But we just have to wait and see where Wood is. You know, hopefully we don't have to move a tackle back down there and then get another guy. You know, hopefully we can leave the tackles where they are. But we'll see. I think that's th those questions will probably be answered. You know, more so by the end of Wednesday's practice, when we can see where who's there and who's not, it's hard to it's hard to go out and play if you don't practice Tuesday and Wednesday. And uh, if those guys can't practice and prepare Tuesday and Wednesday, it's going to be hard to go out and play on Saturday. So by the end of Wednesday's practice, we we'll have a better idea where we are. Because some of you guys were there a couple of years ago when they won down there. Obviously, you played on that. And it's, it's oh, sure, absolutely. I mean, you know, Mario, we talked. You know, Mario and all of them talked about that. They've gone in there and we've won, and that's a, that's a heck of a win for them. And uh, you know, I think any time you can go on the road and beat a team like a Southern Miss, who's probably one of the top two or three teams in our conference, then that's a great win, and uh, that's going to help. You know, those, that'll help us. You know, on Saturday night. How similar? How similar is their spread to yours, Doctor? Uh, it's similar. You know, they, they, the thing they do, Chuck, they get you with tempo. You know, they may be a little bit faster at times than we are, but they uh, they really tempo you. They'll, they'll uh, but there, there's some similarities. Stop. With, Thank you. Yeah, yeah, they. The thing I think they do a great job of too is you can't substitute because they don't change personnel groupings. You know their tight end will, you know their tight end is very athletic, and not only will he be an, an on the line tight end, but he'll flex out and be a wide out too. So, you know you got to get the personnel in the game that you want to play with because 
what happens to you is the officials, as long as the offense doesn't substitute, they don't have to stand over the ball and hold it. You know, if you for you to try to get nickel personnel, different personnel to end defensively, if there's not a substitution on the offense, they don't have to wait on you. So they make it difficult to to match in personnel. So you better be, you better have the personnel you want in the game to begin with. It can work worth whether it's on the tight uh, tight end tight or whether he's flexed out in space. Have your people in the game that you want. That's what that up tempo offense does for you. You know, I thought, uh, you know, for two freshmen to go in there and play like they played, I, I thought they played extremely well. You know, I like their confidence. I like their, I like that, you know, they went in there and they played extremely hard. Uh, you know, the one play that Pac, uh, everybody thought Pac got beat on on the, on, on the over route should never happen. There was a two deep safety in there. Should have gave him some help on that deal. Uh, Daryl Roberts was in position to make a couple plays. He had it covered pretty well. You know, and those two kids are, I'm proud of them. I thought they went in, they played well, and I think they'll continue to get better as the season goes along. But uh, proud of those two guys. I know you'd rather not play so many, but in a way, obviously, this helps down the road to get so many freshmen in there, right? Yeah, it does. I bet that being, I mean, I want to win now. And uh, I mean, there's no question it's going to help you, you know, down the road. And it's going to help us now because they're the, and they're, they're going to help us win now because they have to. I mean, they're the, if they're our best players, and if they are, they're going to play. I don't care if they're freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. You know, the guys perform the best in practice are the guys going to play on Saturdays. And uh, those two guys have, have done a nice job. They sure have. And, you know, Brandon Sparrow, another freshman D lineman, which normally you don't see that, has gone in and played well for us sometimes. And, uh, he's played, he played some tackle the other day. Yeah, yeah he's, uh, he's done a nice job. He's going to be a good player. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you know, you, it's, you know, when you become one-dimensional, it's hard. But you know, one thing I thought we did a good job of. Well, the one thing we did a great job of last Saturday was we didn't turn the damn ball over. If you don't turn the ball over, we got a chance to win every game we play. We're just not a good enough football team to go in and turn the ball over against anybody and, and win any football games. And uh, you know, but I thought Billy Leg uh, and our offensive staff did a good job of continuing to try to run the football a little bit. You know, you got to keep. You know, put punt, you know, give them the, so at least have the threat of the run. There's a couple times I like to finish a couple things that we didn't run in the football, but, uh, you know, I thought we, uh, that Billy was patient and stuck with it, and uh, I think it helped us in the long run. Talk, talk, talk about road focus. I mean, you know, so far the two road games, you know, they had to come out really emotional and really sharp, mm -hmm. uh, either at Ohio State or Bowling Green. You know, now here's your third road game. Talk a little bit about road focus and what you've got to improve there. You know, Chuck, I agree. And we talk, as a matter of fact, I spent an hour with Frank Perano today talking about that. And, you know, if you look at I, I thought Ohio State, I think you can throw that one out the window. I mean, I think they, they beat everybody. They played by 40, and it's probably going to continue for most of the year. They're probably maybe the best team in America. I thought our kids played extremely hard at Ohio State. Didn't play smart at times, but I, I, I don't think focus was an issue. The Bowling Green game, I was disappointed in. I thought we had a great week of preparation. Uh, you know, for whatever reason, you know, we just didn't play the way uh, to up, up to our standards. And, uh, you know, we don't prepare any. I thought our kids, uh, you know, our, our preparation all takes place here prior to getting on that plane. You know, we get to the hotel. It's the best Fridays in football. We continue with our preparation there. And uh, we're, we're going to work extremely hard on that, Chuck. And, you know, our pre again, we don't, we don't ever change anything on the road. We do the same thing on the road we do at home. It's just important that our kids uh, come out and uh, are totally ready to play because if they don't, you know, we're not good enough to beat anybody. We have to give it our best shot in our A game everywhere we go, whether it's home or away, we got problems. I felt that both home games we've we've played about as hard as we can play. So the kids, kind of the consensus, just talking to a couple guys yesterday, they're big fans of not having a walk through on Friday night. They think that they think that helps on the road, not doing that. At the stadiums? Yes, at the opposing stadiums. Yeah, I never. They, and we, they're, 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 they're yeah. really on board. Yeah, I, I don't. Uh, you know, it's fifty. It's whatever fifty-three and a half or fourth, whatever wide. You know, however wide that field is, and however long it is, we're going. We're going to go in there and go play. That's kind of the attitude we take. You know, we do everything at home prior to getting on that plane. We get to the hotel. It's all about the kids and and the coaches together. We spend a lot of time together at the hotel on Friday nights. And but our, you know, we not that we don't prepare because we got three hours of preparation here prior to leaving. Now we, again, we prepare all day on uh, Saturday prior to that game. So. 
you know, I, I just never felt that it was to get in a bus and take an extra hour to go to a stadium and walk around for five minutes and leave. I don't know what you get out of that, so we don't do it. Talk about the state of the special teams, uh, particularly you're talking about Lambley. He took one of the house here. Number one, yeah, a year ago, yeah. Um, you know, at our special team meetings, you always put the goals up there, and you've got your wins and your losses, and there's a lot more Marshall helmets up there this week. You know, I think our, 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 I think Case has done a heck of a job punting the football. I mean, you, know, you look at his net punt and you look at his average, but I don't know how many times, if you look into the red, we, we, we punted into the red zone down there, that he's pinned that guy back. You know, he's done it multiple times. He's done a great job with that. Uh, I think our punt team was good. I think our kickoff return team, we had better average field position than what they had last week. Our punt return team had better uh, average as far as the punt returns are concerned. I think we're we're making progress there. We got to continue to get better on special teams, and we got to get the extra point field goal thing scored away because that's going to get us beat if we don't. You feel more comfortable with Tori Evans and Jermaine Nelson right now? Yes, catch and catch a punch. Yes, yeah, and that's all based on practice and pregame and you know a lot of things. Kelsey at some point is going to be a really good player, but. Uh, Right now, Troy, I feel more comfortable with Troy. Let's talk a little bit about Higgins Wilson, who's rapidly becoming the guy. I mean, he catches the ball, makes things happen. Yeah, him and Aaron both have, have I thought, have done really well. And uh, they're good players. You know, they've, they work extremely hard in practice. And I think I mentioned here before, you know, Demetrius Evans needs to play more. And so does, you know, um, you know, we just have to get some other guys in the game because those guys, again, I keep I sound like a broken record, I know, but when they're playing 70 to 80 snaps a game, you know, towards the end of the game, they're, you know, they got to be able to go win the game for us. And uh, unfortunately, those two guys are playing too much because they have to at this point. But Demetrius Evans has to go in there and make plays, and he doesn't. And you know, we got to get him in there more. And, uh, and when Courtney Emerson was able to get in there and make a couple catches and spell, uh, you know, Tay a little bit uh, last week, which I think helped. Passing game figures to be key this weekend. Though they're very good at stopping the run, <clears throat> up about 118 a game, and it seemed like Louisiana Tech had a lot of success through the air. Yeah, they. You know, the thing is, they still only scored. What was it 14 to 12? I think it was, 13, or something. 12. 13. One of them was a block punt, so yeah. they didn't have a whole lot of success scoring points. But uh, you know, again, I, I think you know, I think we have to be. You know, I I, I think where we get into problems is when we when we're totally one dimensional. And, and all we do is throw it. At some point, we got to be able to run the football a little bit against these guys, and we will. You know, I thought Brian managed that game exceptionally well. You know, Saturday night. You know, his numbers were great, and uh, and it's, he's got to continue to do that. If he'll continue to do that, we got a chance to win every game. It was a little bit of a perfect storm, though, for them. Uh, some of their, their better player was 62, the defensive tackle, and you're out a couple of guards pretty early in the game. Yeah, as far as our. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I tell you, you know, you that Ohio, you, you know, they're they're a well coached, they're a good football team, and uh, it'd be interesting to look up at the end of the year and see how many games they win because I think they're gonna, I think they're gonna win some games. What's up, Brian? You see Brian get more comfortable when he goes vertical early. It seems like the the couple games that y'all have gone vertical early, he's gotten into a little bit better of a rhythm. Yeah, I think any time you can come out and you know and, and and score and have success early, it helps you. Mentally, and it helped. I think it's helped him. You know, both those games we got out of the box pretty quick and had some success. And I think whenever you can do that, it's going to help your quarterback settle into some things. But uh, you know, Tony's done a nice job with him, and we got to continue to we got to help him. You know, and Tony's Tony's helped him. He's made good decisions, and uh, just had we didn't. You know, he's had uh, had, had any, he hadn't had any turnovers in the two home games. We got to continue to do that on the road. It's hard to get out of the gate quickly on the road, though, with the atmosphere, especially. I mean, conference atmosphere. It'll be different, but you know, I think you just go play. I mean, that's you know, it's the same deal. I mean, you know, you just got to go out there. And I, I think when you know you have a good football team, is when you can walk into those arenas, and enjoy enjoy playing in those arenas. You know, I know it, uh, when we were winning championships at Florida, our guys loved going on the road and shutting the crowds up. That was part of their deal. I mean, they just loved doing that, and coaches loved doing that. And uh, you know, that's what you know, we, you know. That's the attitude that we're working hard to get here. And uh, are we there yet? No. But uh, you know, we want to. We want our guys to to have confidence when they go into the road and enjoy doing that because that's that's what it takes. You know, when you go on the road, and to be honest with you, the first year at Florida, we struggled on the road. You know, the losses we had were on the road, and we we spent hours 
and brought a lot of coaches in that were very successful in the summertime after that season and talked about what it takes to win on the road. The number one thing we came up with was toughness. You, know, you got to have a tough football team to walk into somebody else's arena. And the second thing is you had to have great senior leadership and leaders on that football team that you walked in there took that game over for the younger kids. And the third thing was you, you got to have guys that enjoy going in the arenas and shutting the crowds up. Those were the three things that we felt we had to instill into you know, into our players when we, at Florida the first year we were there. And, uh, you know, I mean, you look around the country, there's several teams, inclu- you know, around that's had issues on the road. And, uh, you know, we got to make sure we don't, that we, that we make sure we're prepared and don't have those issues. What about the VA? Um, when you see a lot of quarterbacks in your day, how well is he handling the blitz? I mean, one, one sack in four games and you had troubles blocking up yeah, he's. I mean, he's. I think he's handled it well. I mean, you know, to have just you know what you, you said one sack. I think that was the corner blitz against Ohio State, if I remember right. But uh, he's, you know, I think he's handled the pressure pretty well. He's got the ball out of his hands, and uh, I think he's done a nice job of doing that. Doc, is it still trying to finish games, as you put it? Is it still getting comfortable with the personnel that you can trust? This guy will go finish game for us. Is it still a bit of a? Personnel issue as much as it is what they're doing on the field. You know, I was I was talking to somebody. I don't Randy who it was, but you know, I was reading. I don't know if it's George O'Leary's quote or whatever after the Kansas State game. I heard their players say the same thing. You got to learn to finish. You got to finish. And UAB, I'm sure after the overtime loss to Tennessee, is they got to finish. You know, unfortunately, you know, I, to me, it's more about players. I mean, you get you got to get you, gotta, you know, it's a it's a player driven game, and uh, and you, when you're when you're when you have players that can finish, it makes it a whole lot easier. And, and I think it's all—I I think it's all personnel driven. I, I really do. And I think that's why recruiting is so important, and that's why you know it's such a personnel driven game. And uh, I think when you got better players, it's a hell of a lot easier to finish. That's for sure. I know that. Yeah. I know we won the national title, Florida. We finished some games. It was a little bit easier because you had about eight first round draft picks going after that quarterback. So that makes it—it makes it makes it easier. Yesterday, how you showed a video before the game like that against OU about them not finishing. Does that kind of try to try to inspire something there, as opposed to some other highlight videos you might show? Uh, I know he wasn't supposed to say all that, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I hope he didn't tell you everything we're doing. Over there, but, no, you know it was. You know, we just tried to. You know, every week, you know, you just try to find ways to. You know, as coaches, you just you go out of your mind trying to find ways to motivate kids and 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 you know you just you just wait, you wait, you lay awake at night wondering what you can do better to have that you know team prepared to go play and uh you know we just we showed them you know uh you know the negative deals and why we didn't and all of a sudden then we showed them everything positive at the end there you know and had a 60 minute clock in there that ticked 60 you, to, you, you your ass plays for 60 minutes those issues don't happen and but you know we're it's, we're just trying but it must have worked, I guess. I don't know. Hell, we won. Any more questions? Coach, fans were just asking me uh, Saturday night and Monday about the towels, holding them up, and it didn't seem to be necessarily screening the Ohio sideline. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Well, yeah. The Ohio, Ohio is the guy. They, they do it, they've, and they've done it for years. They, they have stealing signals. And um, that was to just make sure they have a coach. That's, that's all he was doing was trying to get our signals, and we were just making sure that didn't happen. Thanks, guys.